that is the uh, not the best plan. Yeah. He's, he's like, he's like, oh, no, I had I lost my shot. Right. Like if you're going to fight a super strong, supernatural creature, do it from the hiding spot. Right. Don't go to Fist of Cups right up to him. I got to ask you a question. Who's scarier? Three. You have three options. Robert Kyle Carlisle from Train Spotting. Robert Carlyle from this movie or Robert Carlyle when he's become uh, angry? Like, because they're not zombies. They're like uh, infected Carlyle. So which of the three would you not want to come up against? I wouldn't want to come up against this one from this movie because he's both sort of sexy and charming and could also like rip you apart. I think he's like dangerous in multiple different levels. And the other ones I feel like are more... There's like a physical a physicality to them that you know you can get around. I'd let uh, I like, if I had to be killed by one of them, I'd pick Ives because he just gets them quick, neck snaps, shoots. I would not want to be killed by zombie Carlisle. Oh yeah, yeah, and definitely then, not. His character in Train Spotting is just terrifying. The way he throws <laughs> that glass off the bar, or yeah, well, oh man, he's played some really scary characters. He was he was a big deal. I mean, he sort of, still is sort of a big deal, but um, Bond villain. Yeah, yeah. And Whenever he, he shows up, I'm happy. And then he was on Once Upon a Time for about 12 years. <laughs> I can't believe that show was lasted so long. It, yeah, man, that was crazy. Uh, do you want to talk about the final fight? Which, I love Guy Pierce's sweater. I gotta tell you, man. His sweater at the end, when he and Carlisle fight. So he kills Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones lets, you know, they capture a guy. Well, actually, Guy gets stabbed. Then he has to eat more. Then he gets super strength again. And this causes the final fight between him and Carlisle. And I love that this fight because it feels real. It's just they're hacking at each other and they're stabbing and it's ugly and it's mean, right? And it's almost kind of primal, their fight. There's nothing pretty about it. Yeah, so I, I love that you mentioned that sweater. That sweater is awesome. And if I owned it, I would wear it all the time. And the fight is very primal. And the, the director's commentary or one of the commentaries they talked about how they they scripted that themselves it was guy carlisle and antonia they're just like all right what do we have uh let's figure out what we can do here there was no snuck court stunt coordinator um and for for having just the three of them do that it's pretty rad no yeah and they pretty much any weapon that they can grab they grab and there's some good headbutts too yeah, yeah, because I remember watching it the first time, and I was like, I don't quite get, get understand what's going on. And I was like, oh, it's supposed to be primal. It's supposed to be two guys who are super strong just wailing on each other. I mean, people are, I mean, they're almost getting death stabs at certain points, and they're staying alive. And then I love the end. He traps them in a giant, a massive bear trap, by the way, which they had in a deleted scene, which I kind of like. But they, um, yeah, they just, and what did he say? That was very sneaky? That was very sneaky. And then the other line was... If you die first, I'm definitely going to eat you. Yeah. And then he's like, but the question is, will you eat me? And then during the commentary, Carlisle was like, all right, kiss him. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. But yeah, so they're they're Dunsky, right? The two of them? Yeah, they're absolutely done. Yeah. Uh, I I really dug that final scene. And I, I frankly love the character of Ives once he transitioned. Because he's so menacing and charming and um, he seems like the kind of guy who would be fun to be around, except he would probably kill you. <laughs> so I guess maybe not that much fun to be around. <laughs> yeah, he would be horrifying to be around. Jeez Louise. But no, man, this movie, it, I, I, I really enjoy it. It holds up well. You know, the more I watch it, the more I like it. I think because it just has personality. And I think that's why I dig it. Does that, like, it's, just, it's, a, it's a weird little movie. And I, I, yeah. I, 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 I dig that. Yeah. There, I want to mention one thing, the yeah. very end with the general who comes in and eats the stew. What do you think is going on in his mind? He's thinking he's probably eating good, right? He's probably thinking. Yeah, he's, he's like, eating... oh, yeah, this stew's great. Then, like, a day later, he's like, I want to eat people. <laughs> ah. like, like, he's he's screwed. He has no idea. It's like, do, do you know you need to eat people? Or do you just, like, you, I, don't, I don't know. He, didn't, like, he, he didn't purposely do it. So how does he know he's supposed to kill people and eat them? Yeah, he's going to be in trouble. He's just going to crave it. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's like walking along and saying, hey, Private, I'm real hungry right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that guy's going to die. <laughs> For sure. Um, but to get back to what you're saying, like, this movie is a ton of fun. It's strange. It's weird. 
Uh, I give it so much props for trying something different. I, it could have very easily turned into a, a paint-by-the-numbers movie, and it's not. It's just so many elements added up to a unique thing, and that's really why I love it. This is by what? This is no means uh, paint by this. Is, they just threw a bunch of paint at a wall <laughs> and scraped some away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the, this, but I don't know. I, mean, I think it's a testament to Antonia Bird and her other movie that she made, Mad Love. Uh, it was it was like a love story about mental illness, and then they turned it into like a bipolar love story. So she just hated Hollywood, and uh, she just got the heck out of there. She didn't really make too many movies after that. Oh no, Mad Love was ninety ninety six. So she made that, and then she made this, and she's like, yeah, I'm done. This was kind of her last Hollywood movie, which is a bummer. Yeah, I think so. Um, but we did get this. That's yeah. the important thing. And it's and it has an audience, and people love it. Now, <laughs> do they love do, it? Uh, I think I think it's polarizing. Not super polarizing, but there are people who don't like this movie because they're like, this. the soundtrack is weird, and it doesn't it – doesn't, People don't think it meshes together, like the whole like sort of satire, sort of sort of uh, horror movie. Um, I think it works really well together. No, oh, like, I, I love I, it. I completely get it. Um, but I can see why people don't understand it because it, if you are the type of person who wants something to be one thing and you want something to be the other, like you're not gonna go with this hybrid. You're not gonna enjoy a hybrid. You can't. Yeah, your ex, if your expectations are flexible, right? I think yes. you'll dig it. Yeah. And I think we've talked about this before. Like I've seen so many movies that whenever I see something that's unique or weird or strange, I almost always give it a better rating and like it more because that's so unexpected. Like I, I know what to expect in most Hollywood movies. Like I, I can't remember, but I saw a movie the other day and I was like, I know what's going to happen after the first 10 minutes. I called it and I was so annoyed because it got to the end. I was like, this is exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this, you could never tell where this movie's going. Is he gonna jump? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, he just jumped off a cliff. He's eating more flesh. That guy came back. David Arquette is killed. That dude's in the river. Yeah, I love it. Hey, we got some fun coming up, don't we? Oh yeah, we do. A five course meal. A five course meal of p of char movie characters. Movie characters. I picked actors, but I can make the movie characters. Oh, you picked actors. Yeah. Oh, I put I put things in movies. We're gonna have a very different thing. This is gonna be fun. Uh, so before we get into this, I think I think we should take an amouche bouche to cleanse our palate. Yeah. Or in, in our case, an amouche bouchimi. Oh. <laughs> oh, look oh. at that pun. Oh yeah. <laughs> an amouche. Oh, I love that. <laughs> nice little palate cleanser. Amouche yeah. bouchimi. Oh my gosh. I love it. Oh man, so I'm good. I'm feeling good. I mean, that that cannibalistic human, that veal is isn't isn't in there anymore, right? We're we're, re we're ready for this meal. <laughs> I'm ready for this meal. This is one of the stranger lists I've come up with. So this I'm is very proud soup, of it. salad, appetizer, main, and dessert. I have soup, salad, appetizer, main, dessert. Yes, just a different order. Got it. All right, so you, we're gonna have completely different lists. I uh I just went from like things from movies uh, that we would do. So I'm going to start us off just to kind of give you a vibe. And then I can also play off this as well. But for soup, I just thought I would take one of the killer tomatoes and make a ma nice like tomato soup. From it. <laughs> you know, That's like, so good. I would, yeah, like that soup for days. So I would, I would attack one. I would make like a nice tomato, what bisque, you know, nice tomato soup. Uh, I would add some nice pepper in there, some spices, but I think it'd be a really nice opening soup to give to somebody. Yeah, yeah that is fantastic. <laughs> I love that choice. <laughs> uh, who'd you pick for your soup? So my soup, okay, my favorite type of soup is potato soup. So I wanted to pick a celebrity who I think doesn't really bring anything to any role. He's just like kind of a bland thing that you have to add spices to to get it to work. And that is Jason Clark. Whoa, you th really? Jason Clark? I don't think he adds anything in anything. I just see him, I'm like, generic white dude, uh, I'm happy you're here, I'm not displeased with you. Uh, Alright, let's keep going. I loved him in uh, Zero Dark Thirty. I haven't seen Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, he's maybe I saw that and I'm like, this dude's awesome. So this is interesting, so you're kind of thinking he's like an, uh, oh my gosh. I didn't pick her, but I should have picked, what, Egg from Arrested Development? Because she's just a total egg. Yeah, there's nothing there. He's like, uh. 
whatever. Uh, oh wow! So Jason Clark, did you see Pet Cemetery? I own it, but I haven't seen it yet. I, I was thinking more along the lines of um, the Planet of the Eight movies. Like I just didn't think he added anything to that. Oh yeah, you're right. Woody Harrelson was really good, and the wait he was in the second one, and then the third one it was just all it was just Woody, and it was Gary Oldman, and the, yeah, the human characters weren't too strong in there, were they? Franco. No. Yeah. And you know who else could be a good a good potato? Who? I know we're in the soup we're like for my for my soup that's a potato is Mark Wahlberg. Oh wow. Even after like I Heart Huckabees? I, I, I feel like he has like one or two defining roles, but he, since then he doesn't have anything that I'm excited to see him in. It's I'm always like, You're passable. And that's not a bad thing, you know, like like we need a serviceable actor, but like I'm never excited to see one of his movies. <laughs> You ready to move on to our second course? Yes. All right. Do you want to go first? Yeah. So this is the appetizer. I love fried pickles. So I wanted to come up with an actor who was like someone to get me excited about a little bit zesty. And I picked Emma Stone. (laughs) (laughs) Emma Stone's a pickle? Emma Stone is a pickle. (laughs) She's a little zesty, a little spicy. I see that. Yeah, what do you got? Oh, man, this is going to be weird. I got the giant squid from Finding Dory. <laughs> okay. And just took up some calamari. That's, that's pretty awesome. Like, uh, you know, I love calamari. And you know how much calamari we would get from this giant squid? And it's an antagonist, so I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> but I see that pickle. Like, easy A, very pickly. Yeah, I know that's such a weird description, but that's what I thought of. I love it. I love it. Uh, are we on to salad? You were on the salad. All right. I'm, this is really random, but I'm going with the vegetable gremlin from Gremlins 2. I don't remember the vegetable gremlin. Yeah, it just starts spouting carrots and lettuce and broccoli from it. So we would just <laughs> hunt them down and eat them. And That's we, pretty good. We would just lay them on the table and then just eat the vegetables on him, which would be super gross. Reminds me of Troll 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who'd you pick for our salad? I think salad is the easiest one to pick out of all of my weird celebrity foods. That's Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a no-brainer. She's like, she eats clean. She probably has a fresh taste. Got it. And she was really funny in The Chef Show with Jon Favreau. Yes, I love that show. Uh, I'm, I'm almost through with it. I have like two episodes left. She's so funny. She's like, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm Jon Favreau and I got a billion dollars and I yeah. wanted to make a TV show. Man, what, are you going to stop me? <laughs> that is funny. I see that as a salad. You put some... <laughs> this is good. I love it. Okay. Do you want me to go first for the main course? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So my entire theme around this five-course meal is American food, and there's nothing more American than a burger, and there's nothing more American than Keanu Reeves. So we got <laughs> Keanu Reeves as a burger. <laughs> <laughs> the Keanu burger? Keanu Burger. I mean, he's he's a great man, so I bet his meat would taste great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, 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 I'm sure he doesn't drink. You know, he's perfect. Yeah, he he has not sullied his body. He probably has to eat really healthy too. Yeah. Keanu Burger. I right, love it. What do you have for your main course? All right, so I I have, a, I have two that I was thinking about. So there's the Burger and Better Off Dead. That comes to life and, and plays some, what, uh, Van Halen? Or Pizza the Hut? Oh, Pizza the Hut. Come on. You and I just jump Pizza the Hut and eat him. <laughs> Absolutely. You should, it's 100% Pizza the Hut. And he's an antagonist, so we would just be ripping him apart. <laughs> and not feel bad about it? No. Nope. Kind of feel bad about all the other ones I picked. <laughs> yeah, and then I also have Chicken Little. <laughs> <laughs> or Babe. But... <laughs> Oh, I love babe. Yeah, exactly. But those got too dark for me. So I just figured I could happily eat Pizza the Hut. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for dessert, what do you have? All right. So I have two. But before the main dessert comes out, it's going to be the gingerbread man from Shrek. We're going to eat him. And then it's going to be for the main dessert, it's going to be the cotton candy monster from Scooby-Doo 2. <laughs> because it is gigantic. And Scooby and Shaggy eat him no problem, so it would be a perfect dessert for us. <laughs> Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, and we just eat them. What do you think about the flying cupcake that spits tobacco from Cabin Boy? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you sure there's not a ganache tobacco center? <laughs> That's fine. I'll just eat around it. 
I've 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 realized something crazy though. I'm sorry to do this, but like we're 